<laughs> is it time for recess yet? I'm so glad you found time to join us here on the Child Care Director's Chair, where Erica Sacoccio shares her best practices that she's refined through her passion of directing child care centers over the last 23 years. From parenting interaction, systems to save you time, money, and stress, to profitability. She shares it all from the Child Care Director's Chair. Hey there, thank you for hitting that play button. You are now listening to the Child Care Director's Chair podcast. I'm your host, Erica Sicoccio, and I would like to personally invite you to join our community of passionate and inspiring leaders in the ECE field, where we discuss, reflect, and learn the best ways to invest in our children, families, teachers, and community. Because let's face it, we all know they are the heartbeat of any successful program. And today we are going to talk about what's in the news. Uh, this is a great new segment that we started a couple of Fridays ago, and I really love it. And it looks like you guys love it too. So I wanted to talk today about the word daycare or child care. But before we jump into that, I do have to say that I have the best listeners in the world. And I would put my listeners against any other podcast listeners. You guys are so amazing. You show up literally every single day. So I've got to say with my big heart to yours, thank you so much, Michigan, Georgia, Maine, Minnesota, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, North Carolina, Missouri, of course, my friends over in Wisconsin, Land O'Lakes. I, you guys have been with me forever, so I appreciate you. And then our all of our fans down in Texas, I am so excited because I am going to get to meet some of you very soon at TeachCon July 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Please come visit my booth. I want to meet you, so I'm looking forward to that. And the, the interesting thing I thought was really cool is the news that I found um, is written from a uh, educational newspaper um, that comes out of North Carolina. So I thought that that was cool. So let me share. I don't want to take any credit here. I'm going to share this article that I found and I'm going to read a little bit of it. It is called Ed Explainer, Why Early Childhood Education is in Daycare. And it's written by Katie Dukes and Liz Bell. And I have to say, really, really great feature. And so they, they talk a little bit about early childhood education and uh, they had talked about how they talk about it a lot in their periodical. And a reader had reached out to share feedback on the use of the word or term daycare in, in, in their articles. And they really wanted to bring forth that it was a word or a name that we really need to stop using as professionals. Because as we work really hard to advocate and professionalize our industry, we, all of us, continue to use words that are antiquated or do not really fit what it is that we are doing here. We all know what early childhood educators, but think about it. How many of you on your building, right outside your front door, have the word daycare, child care on your building? And I have to confess, mine didn't really say daycare or child care, but we had we use the word program a lot, a before and after school program or our preschool program. And then, I, you know, it's funny because it was not really intentional. But when we opened our very last location out of six, our flagship school, we called that the early learning center. And, you know, I think it was just my own growth and development as I went through 23 years of becoming the educator that I am now that I was like, no, this is a school. This is a school for our children. And we are teachers, but even myself, someone who I, I feel like have always been an advocate for the professionalism of our field, even I found I was using maybe not the best terminology to really talk about what it is that we do here. And in this article, they get a quote from uh, Jennifer Bosworth, who is a professor in the education department at a technical community college. And she, and she writes, in the, field, in the field of early childhood education, we're working to professionalize the field. Can I get an amen to all you out there listening? <laughs> right? Something extremely challenging because of the public's view of child care as being quote unquote babysitters and not truly education. And the early childhood education program and my counterparts across the state are teaching our students to educate the youngest children through developmentally appropriate practices that serve culturally, linguistically, and ability diverse children. And the work that they do is so important. 
and so are the words we use. And I was like, wow, what a great article. What a great sentiment. And, you know, she really is right. Like, so the, you know, as we talk, the talk to parents and legislators and, and, you know, there's so many conversations right now about why what we do is so important. And we really have at this point, the national stage, because the, everybody's talking about universal pre-K and talking about the importance of early childhood and, um, you know, how children grow and develop. And that's a conversation that's happening right now. And then they make reference to a book called The Daycare Myth. And I, I looked, I looked at it, I found it on Amazon. It is like $28. Um, it's written by Dan. I'm going to probably butcher the last name, so I'll spell it. W-U-O-R-I. And it's called The Daycare Myth what we get wrong about early care and education and what should we do about it. And it certainly looks like a very good book. And it's probably one that I'm going to purchase after reading uh, this article. But I, I think it's really important for us as we all work towards advocating uh, that we start using these words too. I think it matters, right? We know it matters. So the, it goes on to talk about how the book captures the sentiment shared by many researchers educators and lead leaders in the early childhood education field, including a representative um, who has name is mentioned in the article. I'm not going to mention uh, names of folks, but uh, you can certainly find this article yourself. And so, you know, there is folks that are representing early childhood in, in the legislation. And so there are several terms describing early childhood education that carry a somewhat negative or minimizing a term such as child care, daycare, nursery school. And he, and he writes a little bit in the email about teachers are providing so much more than babysitting. And I challenge anyone who thinks it's easy to come spend a day in the classroom. I think we've all said that. <laughs> come spend a day in the classroom, right? So I, I think it's great that this type of stuff is in the news. And I feel like if everybody goes to this article and shares it on their social media, shares it in the on their school social media, shares it with their friends, shares it on their LinkedIn. Um, I think it's really important that we get everybody behind this message because once you start using the correct terminology, along with all the efforts that we are making in the field, I, I think it's it's it matters. And I think it's a great way for us to articulate what we need to happen. So in the article, they talk about travels to other states and research that they found. And I wanted to share this, which I thought was really great. So they found a variety of ways that people refer to early childhood education at their state level. And they talk about New Mexico and they have a cabinet level and it's called the Early Childhood Education and Care Department. Oregon has its own state level. It's called Department of Early Learning and Care. Michigan, oh, my friends in Michigan, uh, you guys have the Office of Child Development and Care is housed in the newly created Department of Lifelong Education, Advancement, and Potential. Wow. Does that say it all? That's an amazing name, and it does set the bar and really is very concrete about what it is we are doing every single day. My neighbors in Massachusetts, they house their Department of Early Education and Care within their Executive Office of Education. And then Vermont also has mentioned similarly, uh, similarly placing early education within its agency of education. So I feel like a lot of states are moving towards this. I even feel that in a few years, at least in my state, I feel like licensing or a good part of it may end up in the hands of the Department of Education or some type of marriage between DHS, Department of Human Services, and Department of Education. So I feel like that really is um, what is happening. Um, even, and it's, it talks about it a little bit here too, North Carolina state government also emphasizes the significance of education in its office. And so they have a formal system. It's Division of Child Development and Early Education under the Department of Health and Human Services, which is totally what's happening here in my state. Hasn't really been framed that way, but I mean, it's the writing is on the wall. That's definitely what is happening. And then some folks use the word educare, and that is something that is used in other models in other countries. So I thought that was, I thought that was really great. 
So this is a wonderful article that you should check out. I'll put the link for the article in the show notes. And then I will also share it on our Facebook page so that you guys can find it really easily. But I want to ask you, what do you, let's, 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 let's think about this for a sec. I want to be a little reflective because that's what I really love doing on the show. I want you to ask yourself, how can we shift the narrative and perception surrounding child care centers to accurately reflect the critical role that we all play in early childhood education? We got to figure out how do we do it. And it's going to start right within your four walls, obviously, right? You're going to educate your staff. You're going to educate your parents. That's going to branch out to educating your communities and then getting all of those folks around this message and then advocating at the state level. And it could be blogging about it. It could be making social media posts about it. It could be connecting with uh, your local and NACI branch to see what they're doing and how you can become involved. It could be you write an article for your local newspaper. I mean, there's just so many ways that we can all shift this narrative. Could you imagine if 200 people, just 200, not even a lot, it's not even a lot, 200 people that listen to this podcast did something today on their social media about the words that we use around our centers, started calling them early childhood, early childhood learning centers. So it starts with us. So I, I want you to really think about that. What steps can early childhood educators take to ensure that your voices are heard and the expertise acknowledged in advocating for child care centers as centers for early childhood education? And so what I'm going to say is make, make a video, make a, a short little clip, send it to me. I will share it on my platform. I will share it on all of my social media. I would love to get three, four, five, six, seven, eight videos, literally about why you think that the terms that we use matter. As child care center owners and leaders, we have to come together with strategies that we can implement to prioritize educational outcomes and emphasize the educational aspect of the services that we provide. Because right now, everybody wants to talk about the cost of care. Nobody's talking about the cost of care in other educational facilities. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm wrong. They're comparing the cost of preschool and college and also child care. It costs, you know, 30 percent, 40 percent of, of people's incomes. And, you know, we all know that the cost of care is expensive. We know because we run the schools and we know what it costs. So, yes, I believe that if we do need to advocate what we're doing, just like public education is funded, early childhood education should also be funded. There are mixes of all different types of schools, at least in my state. I know that there are. There's private schools. You know, parents have a choice. Um, there's charter schools, which parents have a choice. And a lot of that is paid for through state funding, right? You can go to a charter school if that's your choice. And that is paid through the state. So I think that we need to really all get together and say, there should be choice and, and, and how do we help parents with choice and affordability, but not expecting us to get paid less because let's face it, most of us in early childhood education do not even make a fraction of what they do in an elementary school, in a public elementary school or a high school or a college, right? Not even close. But yet at the higher levels, especially high quality programs, we're expected to have the same degrees. We're expected to have the same level of expertise and we should be expected to because that's what high quality takes. So that's what's in the news today. I'd love, 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 love to see if you guys could make me a video. I want to share it on my platform. Also, I want to tell you something before we wrap up. Those of you who listen all the time, you know, but I want to make sure if this is your first time on the show that you know about it as well. So right in the show notes, right at the top, there is a little green spot where it says text the show text the show. Click that button. I would love to know what your favorite episode is on our platform and why. Leave me your name and your mailing address. We are raffling off one $100 gift card to Lakeshore Learning within the next two weeks. I would love to give it to you. Yeah, you, the one who listened all the way to the end of the episode, which I appreciate so much. So text the show. Let me know what episode you like the best. Maybe this is it, but I, I, I really want to give this gift card to somebody who's listening today. So go ahead. I'll wait. Click the text the show. I'll stay on while you're, while you're texting. I'm pretty sure you can do it at the same time. But text the show. Let me know what episode you like the best. If this is it, let me know what you like. And then also, of course, 
you can let me know too your thoughts of um, what you thought about today's in the news. So that's it for today. As always, I want you to remember it's the little details that make a big impact on the success of your early learning center. <laughs> have a great day. Well, all the cute little kiddos have been picked up and it's time to go home. And that'll do it for another episode of the Child Care Director's Chair. Please leave a review so Erica knows the information is helping you to manage and improve your child care centers. Remember to subscribe to get the latest episode from Erica's Child Care Director's Chair. <laughs>